Hey folks, so a few weeks back we took a look at the baby Tahiti card, the 7870 XT, you know that card that should have really been called the 7930. Well one of the questions that cropped up quite a lot when talking to you guys was how it compares in 2017 to the budget Darlin, the GTX 1050 Ti. But before we get cracking on that, remember to like, share and subscribe as well as comment on the video. The aim is to always bring you the content that you want to see, so let me know what you think down below. Shameless self plug out of the way, and I think it's fair to say when it comes to the 1050 Ti, I gave it a pretty hard time, especially at the start of the year, when the high prices just felt at odds with both the cut down Pascal architecture and compared with some of the used prices of higher end last gen cars like the GTX 970 and even the 280X. Sure it did perform, but there was always that nagging feeling in the back of my mind that Nvidia priced the card higher than it needs to be. But then the cryptocurrency boom happened and AMD card prices skyrocketed and the 1050 Ti, in a complete twist of events, became the poster child for value performance. So it's time to blow off the cobwebs of my own 1050 Ti and see if this baby Tahiti LE GPU nestling at the heart of the 2GB 7870 XT manages to put up a fight. I won't bore you with the specs, if you want you can click the link up in the corner to see a more detailed look at the 7870 XT, and since it's been a while since I actually benchmarked the 1050 Ti, every game has been re-benched here, using the latest drivers available as of the end of October 2017, and tested in the exact same sections of the game for both cards, in an attempt to give a pretty accurate comparison. For the 7870 XT, the boost clocks could be raised considerably to around 1.2GHz and the memory to an effective speed of 6.4GHz. This is up from the 1GHz base clock and 5GHz on the RAM, and it's actually ever so slightly higher than what I achieved before, thanks to me replacing the aging thermal interface material. Coupling these cards with Core i5-4590 and 8GB of RAM and setting every graphical setting to 1080p on a high preset with FXAA or a similar setting if not available and 16x anisotropic filtering was the order of the day here. And the first game that we loaded up was PUBG. Since it's hard to accurately replicate scenarios in multiplayer, I'm using two playthroughs here which both seem to kill a couple of guys and then die spectacularly in the space of 10 minutes. Using the Tahiti based AMD card at stock clocks will average out about 40 FPS, with the average minimums at the bottom few percent coming in at 26. The GTX 1050 Ti here happily overtook the 7870 XT with an average of 49 FPS while the average minimums came just shy of 30. Overclocking the XT helped close the gap a little on the Ti, but with optimizations for this game being well, bad at the best of times, Pascal certainly pulled ahead here. Battlefield 1 now and it returned very similar results for both the 7870 XT and the 1050 Ti, both proven to be very playable but the gap extending in favour of the 7870 XT when overclocked. Really though, if Battlefield 1 is your game, either card is going to provide you with a nice blast back in time with higher minimum frame rates being easily achievable on either card if you turn down some of the more visually intensive options. Crisis 3 really likes Nvidia hardware and here we see the GTX 1050 Ti take a commanding lead. It's not that the Tahiti LE card is bad or unplayable by any stretch of the imagination, far from it, it's just that the game loves the Pascal architecture at the heart of the GP107 GPU. Overclocking the XD obviously helps close the gap here, but even then the 1050 Ti still enjoys higher minimum frame rates overall. Now Wolfenstein 2, it's a game that I really wanted to test, and probably the reason that this video is a little later than it could have been. Running at the high preset but with the anti-aliasing set to FXAA, the GTX 1050 Ti takes a commanding lead over the 7870 XT in the initial stages, with about a 13 FPS gap between the two cards at stock clocks. As expected again, overclocking the Tahiti GPU shows impressive gains and manages to more than half that difference. These results were taken from the first 20 to 30 minutes or so of the game and features a wide array of locales and action sequences. It should be noted here that the 1050 Ti didn't manage to keep above 60 FPS in some of the more demanding scenes with screen tear being noticeable, just like it was with the AMD card. And turning down the preset down a notch smoothed things out considerably and brung more parity to both of these cards. The new Colossus is a game which like Doom you're really going to want to play at a fluid 60 FPS, so my advice to you would be to tweak whatever settings you need to, to get a solid 60 FPS. On to Prey now and the 7870 really gets its groove back here, hurtling close to 90 FPS on average when overclocked. The 1050 Ti is similarly impressive, averaging out at 87 FPS. 
Prey really just goes to show what can be done when a dev team really sits down and goes through the process of optimization. Hugely impressive showings for both these cards, with the overclocked 7870 XT and the 1050 Ti keeping its 1% lows above 60 FPS, while the stock clocked 7870 XT was not far behind and likely only hampered by the 2GB of VRAM at the stock clocks. Rise of the Tomb Raider now, and a game which we have seen time and time again can tax even the most high-end cards. Still, both cards here put up a good fight, with there really being very little in between them. The game looks great even when we're running at these upper middle of the road settings, and both cards offered a comparable gameplay experience. The GTX 1050 Ti here does nudge ahead slightly by a few frames on average, while the lows were almost on par with the overclocked 7870 XT. Finally, rounding things off, we hopped back into Fallout 4. Great game and great experience on either of these cards, and a test which I ended up sinking quite a few hours into long after the benchmarking had been recorded. The 1050Ti here does nudge past the 7870, but again we're only talking a few FPS, but it still manages to hold on to this lead even when the Tahiti GPU is overclocked. So what's the final story then? Well, on average, it's plain to see, the 1050Ti is a faster card, but the question really should be, is the value there? Well, it doesn't require a beefy PSU, whereas the 7870 is going to need something probably a bit more than you would expect from a repurposed office system. So if we assess the true value of these cards, we're going to need to account for a reputable PSU on top of the purchase price of the 7870 XT. So, for these charts, I've taken the value of the used 7870 XT, the £50 I paid for it, which converts to about $65 for our friends in the US, and added a decent budget PSU onto that price. £35 or $35 is going to get you something like an EVGA 500 watt 80 plus white, and that will do the job nicely. For the 1050 Ti figures, I've used average new prices and used prices. On eBay, you can snag a TI for around £110 or $110, depending on the model and if you're willing to forego the buy it now options. So, taking an average of the average frame rate seen across all seven games and factoring in these price metrics, we see the following. In short, you're going to want to spend as little as possible to get as much FPS as possible in the card, and the card with the lowest figure here is going to represent what is essentially the better value. Now, it should come as absolutely no surprise that a used 1050 Ti is going to offer much better value than a new one. That's just got to be common sense. But the real value here, in my opinion, it lies in the 7870 XT. Although, on the whole, the performance was marginally lower than the 1050 Ti, the lower purchase price means that if you can get it for around the same ballpark figure as I got it, it's going to offer a lot more bang for buck. Stateside, it is a little bit different though, with the lower relative cost of the 1050 Ti meaning that it actually pips the 7870 XT as the value proposition. This is of course with the caveat of the new PSU. In both here in the UK and the US, if you don't require a new PSU specifically to run the 7870 XT, then it drops the price per frame cost considerably. And even its stock clocks, the 7870 XT is going to offer you more bang for your buck. A bit of a mouthful that, and it really just boils down to your individual situation. What is absolutely clear though, is that these old Tahiti based cards still have some legs in it, even if it's in its lowest form here, like we see with the Tahiti LE. So if you come across one of these Tahiti LE based cards and the price is right, snap it up. Even five years after its release, this Tahiti GPU can still put a smile on a budget gamer's face. But that's not to say the 1050 Ti doesn't have its merits at this point in time, especially in the current climate that we find ourselves in, far from it. Now I think I might be softening to the little Pascal card, and I think it's actually something that we should cover in a little bit more depth soon, but that's a topic for another time. If you've lasted this long, then I'll just say thanks for watching. Both cards here perform really well, and with the right mix of settings, either card will prove to be a capable workhorse. Just remember to look at the bigger picture when choosing your cards. All I've got left to say here, folks, is take care, and hopefully I'll see you all in the comments section down below, and in the next video.